This is Live from the Table, the official podcast of the world-famous Comedy Cellar, coming at you on Sirius XM 99, Raw Comedy, formerly Raw Dog. This is Dan Natterman. Uh, I'm here with Noam Dwarman, owner of the world-famous Comedy Cellar. Perry Galashian Brand joins us, our producer and on-air personality. And you can see us, by the way, also on YouTube if you uh, if you want to see our pretty faces. Some are prettier than others. We are joined by... That was pretty good, right? Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very like morning radio. We're joined by uh, Jess Anderson. She's a comedian from Appalachia. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation. Uh, she's also a co-host of the Tarp Report, a podcast, and uh, with her best friend and fellow comedian Dane Hesseldahl, they both own the uh, Comedy Bar, a comedy club in Seattle. And Dane Hesseldahl, is that the right pronunciation? You got it. Nailed he it. joins us as well. So here we are with Jess and Dane from Seattle's Comedy Bar. Which made the news recently because they recently uh, disinvited, uh, I believe it was four comedians from the, from performing there. We did, yeah. That was um, remember the comedians, Dave? Jim Florentine, correct? Dave Smith, You're correct? Kurt Metzger, correct? Ari Shafir, no. Louis, oh. Louis, Louis, Louis J. Gomez, okay. But yeah. you would have probably also banned Ari Shafir if he was scheduled. Probably. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I was. I mean, I was on a roll, so yeah. No. Well, he's but he's part of that crew. I think the well, and see that's the the problem. skanks or the, whatever the legion, yeah, okay. yes, that I've heard of. Okay, so. okay, so so t so you want, so so let's let's go through this step by step because you must know we come from a very different point of view than you guys do in terms of the way we uh, uh, book our room, where we view our roles in society and all and all that stuff. The cancel culture in comedy is alive and well. This weekend, four different comedians had their scheduled appearances canceled all by the same Seattle Comedy Club in what sure seems like a sweeping capitulation to politically correct and woke entities working behind the scenes. The Capitol Hill Comedy Bar in Seattle canceled comedians Dave Smith, Luis Gomez, Jim Florentine, who will join us in a minute, and Kurt Metzger. Claim, quote, we truly value the art of comedy and the diverse perspectives it brings to our lives. Jess Anderson, owner and booker of the club, in the same email said, after careful consideration and discussions with our team, investors, local comedians, and neighborhood advocacy groups, we've encountered a challenging situation that requires us to revisit the planned shows. Revisit. They can't even say it's canceled. It goes on. Capitol Hill is known for its progressive values, and we've received significant feedback expressing concerns about the alignment of these upcoming shows with the neighborhood's ethos stuff so um so tell us how it came about what why why did you book these guys and then what led to you um making yeah you know, yeah um pulling so, the plug well so what happened um was their agent um got in contact with me or kurt's agent um they sent me an email and they asked if um now kurt is not one of the legion of skank he is not yep. Um, and well, he's skank uh, adjacent. Person. Yes, but yes, right. Um, but so, which I didn't know. I didn't know who the Legion of Skanks were. I'd never heard of them. Um, I I had known Kurt from um, Chelsea lately. Mm -hmm. When I was, I used to watch. I used to love, you know, that kind of uh, pop culture stuff. So I knew him from there. Um, and so when I saw a message for Kurt Metzger, I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's. Like, that's so cool. Like, I, and I Googled him and, you know, he has a Peabody. And I'm like, this is freaking exciting. And so um, uh, I, t when I was on the phone with his agent, he was like, oh, well, you know, while I have you, you know, I also have these other, these three other guys. And I'm like, hell yeah, you know. And so I got off the phone with their agent feeling like an all-star. Like I was, like, I'm like I just, I just booked four headliners. I am, and you have a relatively small club. Yes, and I am brand. Yeah, how many seats? Um, depending on how we set it up, but one fifty, one seventy. Oh, that's not that small. And you're just yeah. starting out, relatively, relatively yeah. new. We opened yeah. in May. So to have a national acts uh, at, at your club is a is a is a yeah. feather in your cap. Big deal. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm a new booker. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, and so I was I was so excited. Mm -hmm. Um and and so I had them. That was in that was on February, I believe, like February eighth. Um and um and then we. I did a little bit more research and realized, uh oh, <laughs> like maybe, um, you know, this might not be 
the the good idea that I thought it was going to be. And so tell us about the research. Just I talked to investors and um, just people who were like sending me stuff, letting me know that like, hey, these are things that have been said. And, you know, so, so look, just to go to go step by step. Sorry, I'm say so you booked them. Yes. And then the investors caught wind of it by looking at the calendar or you reached out to the investors to let them know. No, I looking at the calendar. They yeah. looked at the calendar and then they contacted you. Yes. And said what? That this was probably not a good idea. These are not people that you wanted to to welcome into our home. <laughs> yeah, you know, and the thing is, is that it's it, the situation is not the investors dictate to us who who we can book, but it was a seed that was planted that then right. we, we went and we started talking to comedians we work with, producers that we work with, um, folks in the neighborhood to kind of you know understand the feeling and you know. Not only are we new club owners, new bar owners, you know, we're young comedians too, right? <laughs> um, and so it's like, um, you know, you talk to people who've been around. Who've worked. So, so did you, and I want to read the email that Kurt put, did you, did you sample like Dave Smith's routine or Kurt Metzger's routine and identify something that you didn't want to have on your stage? Mm. More just like the tweets and things like that that they yeah, but, were saying. Well, and I, I think <laughs> I, I I don't want to to make this a referendum on on you know their their material and things that they've said or, or what they've done. I think that you know it's more about them as people. Well, it's more about <laughs> no, it's more about the perception of what Legion of Skanks is. You know, they they rep themselves as the you know the raunchiest, most unfiltered, uh, you know, guys out there, right and the ethos of our room, our mission is to provide a safe space for people in our neighborhood to do comedy. I don't know how much you guys know about Capitol Hill. No, and let's let's hold hold that safe space in because that's a sure. big issue, right? But just I want to say, um, Legion of Skanks when they do their like shows with all of them, it it can be pretty raunchy. Mm. But like if you watch Dave Smith's uh, thirty minute special I saw recently, that's different. It's it's you know Legion of Skanks is not scripted stand up. It's just like this, right. you know. So so. It's a bunch of dudes and they're they're raunchy, mm. uh, for lack of a better word. They're also bright and insightful and and interesting. Absolutely. But you know, yeah, but they're each one of them. No, I don't. I I know. Um, I don't know Luis Joe Gomez's stand up really, but I know Dave Smith's stand up. I know Kurt's stand up, and um, Florentine. And I, Florentine, I haven't seen in a while. Florentine's stand up is, I don't even don't see think- it as pro- as quote unquote problematic. His stand up is pretty typical stand up comedy. Fair. He's fantastic. Don't get me wrong, but he's not like one of these guys out there who's super controversial. Is what I meant. Um. So, well, that's really so. so is it fair that like a guy Dave Smith who was going to come there and do his pretty, you know, a, a pat stand up routine? That's why I say it's really about the person. You you don't like it's not it's not what he was going to say on stage. It's who he is off stage that you didn't want. There, I, I know it sounds like I'm asking accusing questions, but I'm asking actually the proper questions. You know, I'm trying to get to understand it. So, yeah, um, no, I think it's more. I think it was just more of a concern of like what how our friends would perceive us booking these comedians who have you know said these things directly about them. Well, right, let's go ahead, say about the safe space now. Well, I. You know, it's one of our missions. You know, Capitol Hill is one of the most progressive neighborhoods in the country. This is where Chaz was, right? This is where the the uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that is Chaz was with during the, the I forget what it stood for during the Black Lives Matter period. Yeah, there was a part of Seattle that that uh kind of seceded from the union. It declared itself autonomous. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I think that that's overblown, and I think that that when people you know bring that up with regards to Capitol Hill, what that was is that was two blocks, you know, and the area is huge. It's no, but it's an indication of how how progressive this part of the country is. That's a, right. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I wasn't trying to hang it around your yeah, neck. I'm yeah. just saying, um, you know, uh, and so as a club in this neighborhood, you know, we want to. It's it's a business. There's a market for you know what you might call safe space comedy. You know, what I've heard so much about is comedy is this, and comedy is about making fun of yourselves, and comedy is about being able to say whatever you want. And we have a market that's not that. We have a market for people where they can come and they can feel safe to not be made uh, to feel bad over aspects of their own existence. Well, you define your community 
you, are you defining it in terms of your social community or the, or the neighborhood or, or Seattle? Because I'm pretty sure you made a lot of money on these. These guys would have sold out. I mean, Dave Smith would have sold out in a heartbeat. Sure, sure, absolutely. So it's not as if the community would have rejected him. Well, you probably have way more people for Dave Smith than on. Well, they might have come from wherever they came from, but not within the Capitol Hill area. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, th these people would be here for well, one night. We have to be here every day, you know? And, you know. And, and would they punish you for that? I think that there are producers and comics who would not work with us, you know, if we had gone forward with these shows. You know, we do a lot of queer focus shows. We do a great open mic called Queers to the Front, where we prioritize marginalized voices. Um, yeah, but these guys are libertarians. They're not anti-gay. They're, 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 these are libertarians. They want people to live and let live. Yeah, but again, it's, it's, well, it, the, the perception of the thing is not based on, their stand-up, the perception of the thing is based on what the Legion of Skanks represents as as a cultural force. Well, what do they represent? Well, I think their whole thing is that they're like, we can say the N-word, we can say the F-word, and you know, it's The totally, F-word? Who doesn't yeah. say the F-word? Do, do they say the N-word? I don't think well, No, it's not, 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 Oh, yeah, they probably, yeah, they probably say the F-word, but, um, is that a, a policy lot of comedians at, do. A policy at your club that there's no, if I were to work there, I don't work clubs because I have anxiety issues. Uh, I prefer one night and get the hell out of town. But, but, so there's no awkward moment. But, um, would you give me a, a, a list of things or topics to not say? I remember there's a club in, in Erie, PA that would tell you to be clean. I don't think they exist anymore. Yeah. But, but do you give your headliners a, a, a list of things to, a, topics to avoid or words not to say? No. No, no. I mean, we have a code of conduct for our open mics, but, um, you know, that said, I, you know, we, we do our best to, to book people who, you know, don't use that language, you know? So, so even if, if somebody says, um, fuck, but just as a punctuation, like, what the fuck is that? that I don't think be... they care about fuck. No, no, we, about... no we don't care about fuck. We, we care about language that denigrates other human Gay beings. slurs. Gay slurs, racial yeah, slurs. Like um, now, like, you, a ableism, all that kind of stuff. In the email, that leaves Dan out. In the email um, that uh, I do have one joke about a woman in a wheelchair, but in the email that you wrote, Kurt, it's available online. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll. Cut we did it. not write that email to Kurt. <laughs> you didn't write it or to his man. Well, it was to, to yeah, it was to his agent. Like I didn't realize that it was going to be like an a. Oh a yeah. Press a release. Anything you say <laughs> or write in, in the yeah. Network. Well, I mean, yeah. Like for, from our perspective, we booked them on the February eighth, and on February twenty second, two weeks later, we decided to revisit the bookings. We hadn't signed contracts yet, right? Um, and and so you know, and it felt reasonable in a two week time frame. Um, no, we, it's your we, business. You can do what you want. Yeah. So, but uh, so much of the email tracks what you've already said. But then there's one part here, which says, "We truly value the art of comedy." And the diverse perspectives it brings to our lives. Sure, but it sounds like that's the opposite of what you're saying. You don't want you don't want diverse perspectives. You want perspectives that that conform to your perspective. I don't. I, I think that there's a difference between saying I I I value a perspective and I want someone to come into my business to represent that perspective. I I I think that there's a place for all sorts of stand-ups. These guys got rebooked in Tacoma. I think that's fantastic. Those are great clubs and they'll do very well and I'm happy for them. I mean it, it's not it's not that I don't think they should be able to do comedy. It's just I don't want them to do comedy in no. in my club because it's right. not a good business decision. It's but not a judgment of, about what it, the it's hard said. it's a hard sell to say I really value diverse perspectives, but not in my club. I mean, if you valued it, wouldn't you have it in your club? Well, but we do have diverse perspectives. We just don't from, have... From what to, what's the range of uh, diverse perspectives? I mean, we, we have... Comedians. Like me and my club, we had a night where they had Norman Finkelstein calling Israel uh, a genocidal state. Would you, would you allow that in your club, by the way? I mean, uh, honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> that, that's like, not sure. You remind me of the, of the, Har the Harvard uh, president. And then we, another night, we had some people from the IDF answering questions... But, about you know defending that yeah so that's diverse perspectives right. and we actually we get a lot of flack for that mm. but we actually do value diverse perspectives and and we and we try to live that way as a matter of, and 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 I put on perspectives that make my stomach turn mm. because I feel that's my obligation right. to do that it's 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 only meaningful to say I'm about free speech 
when I have to sit through speech that really bothers me. To say I'm about free speech and put on things I agree with, that's, that's a free ride, right? Well, but but you do that because that's what your audience wants. No, no, I do I do it even if the audience doesn't want it. I do but, it but, but I do it because I believe it, that's it, it's fundamental to America. But well, that sounds overblown. But I swear to God, that's just, true. Just to clarify, that was not an evening of comedy. That was another kind of event. So what? Well, the point is, is I do, okay. I do the same thing with comedy too. But with comedy, of course, your one your one criterion is they've got to make the audience laugh. Yeah, if the people who bought tickets to see Dave Smith would certainly have enjoyed Dave Smith. He's not going to impose Dave Smith on the people who don't want to see him. He's, he's on the calendar. Who's going to buy tickets to Dave Smith? Dave Smith's audience, right? Mm-hmm. So, so that's what I'm saying. It's, it's not about, you weren't about, I don't put words in your mouth. It wasn't about offending the people who came to the club that night to see these acts. It was not. about the people who were not there. In the neighborhood. Who are telling you, you shouldn't, be showing diverse perspectives. Well, th- those are our customers. Like we're a, we're a local club. Yeah, we're a local club. Those are our neighbors. Like ninety nine percent of our ticket sales are people who live within a few blocks of us. You know, our, our biggest advertiser is an A frame so, sign outside the club. So is has it? So, okay, so let me let me say. So I would hope that people would recognize the following: most of the progressive causes which have won the day, gay marriage, civil rights, I mean, you, you name it, all the things that we value started out as uh, offensive ideas to the community that were able through the social norm of allowing these people to express themselves to, uh, to win the day and, and um, become the, the new majority opinion. Isn't there something distasteful about people who've achieved great things by being allowed and only by being allowed to speak and present themselves, then turning the tables on the views that they don't agree with to try to make sure that they're not heard. In other words, we were right, so therefore it was right, but oh no, once now that we have what we wanted, we're shutting the spigot off. This free speech comes to an end now. So it's not about, shouldn't they value the principles that benefited them rather than the opportunistic ability to censor people the way people tried to censor them when they were trying to say, you know, women should vote, black people should be on the vote, gay people should get married. Every community, across the street here at the Cafe of Gogo, very famous, um, uh, when Lenny Bruce was arrested for violating the community sensibilities. Sure. Th- these are the people historically you're lining up with. You recognize that. So what you're, what you're, th- you're all in on the fact that the one idea is that I am going to uh, get behind censorship on these are the right ones, and I know they're the right ones, and that's why it's worth principle. Th- I'm, the principle ends here because I know I'm right, and they have nothing to offer to the debate. That, I well, don't think we said they. Don't well, well, that's what that's what your, your the, debate, the people that you're afraid like, of offending. Well, but I I would tell them to go f themselves. Say this, this is America. But uh, well, I, why, they, and, and by the way, would you tell them how to make money? In other words, you have to make a living. But that's what. But that's what. I, but that isn't that what everyone else is doing right now? Like that's what everyone else is telling us to do. We have to do it a, a certain way. No, you don't have to. I'm saying like, that you. you but that if we don't do it this way, then we're wrong. Well, you're you're seeding a basic American principle that we all we all that we all grew up with, which is that I may despise what you're saying, but I but I fight to the death for your right to say it. This is an old yeah, cliche, right? You can say, you can say it wherever you want. Well, no. But not no. You you can, out there. Yeah, you can. <laughs> as opposed to saying but I'll fight the point of I would fight with my I'll fight to the death for your right to say it. Absolutely. Is both could be literally but figuratively you fighting for some for with your life for someone's right to say it would mean I will book you at my club. You're going to sell out. I'm going to fight for the principle that people should be able to express themselves. I mean, they're not Nazis. These, these well, are not, these are not mean, hard th- cases. These are not, I mean, according to the emails that I, I'm the Nazi, um, like, uh, well, like, it's just, what for me, the way that I look at it, it's like, we, I, I don't, it was a mistake that I made. I, I fucked up by booking them in the first place. Yeah. 
that was that was a I, I've been doing this for less than a year, and I got in over my head, obviously. Yeah. Um, and it was it was I, and I understand how important I am. I am trying to be a comic as well, so I understand how important a booking is, especially at a club, especially at a club in Seattle. I did not take making that decision lightly, but I didn't cancel them. I just canceled no, the booking. No, I like nobody's saying you can. And I don't want, but like, but the thing is that that Kurt went on on national television and said that I deserve to be taught a lesson. Deserve to be ridiculed. And and we've been, I mean, we've been well, getting bomb threats no, and bomb threats. Like are, uh, people have been threats. telling me that I should be raped and my children should be killed and like that. Like so. Obviously, that's that's. I, I've had some experience with the same thing for opposite opinions right. of you well, so which is really what i'm getting at right well but you, no you, you, can you, we you, be can you, we be on the opposite like can yeah like, what, can we understand each other what, like why can't there be a club that does what your club does and then a club what, that does what ours does? okay it's but the, res it's the respectfully the people are saying these outrageous things to you you're feeding them the rationale to behave that way in my opinion because by acknowledging to, Threaten to rape me? No, no, no. To to feel that anger, there, nobody should threaten to rape anybody. Obviously, this goes out saying these are the, the excesses, but the the underlying cause that they're feeling is fed by your actions, which communicate these people are n not fit in polite company, and that can work both ways. The idea that people. One side sees it this way, they'll say the other, other way. The idea that if you cross the line and allow the people we decide to speak, you're doing a horrible thing. Your customers will try to shut you down. They're offended. You'll lose them. On the other side, as opposed to the notion of everybody accepting, listen, I, I, I don't need to like everybody that plays at that club. Mm -hmm. they're, as I said, they're not Nazis. You know, let, let them... I thought of my business who appears there tomorrow night. I'll buy a ticket to see. They, they do show queer centric shows and they show uh, th things that are right up my alley and I admire them for that and I'll go see those shows. But good for them if they want to bring in somebody, you know, they value diverse perspectives. If if you had shown me some bit that one of these guys was going to say, and say, well, this is, you know, offends me personally. I mean, at least I would entertain that, but... This is to me worse than that because it's just based on them. Like, well, you don't like what they. It, I. That's how I feel. You have a right. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't mean to. I'm being honest with you. you know? No, I mean I, I get it, but you know w what I would say again is I don't want to get mired. Trying to keep their comedy out of it. Yeah, I I, I don't want to <laughs> get mired down in like what they've said or, or what they've done. This is a business decision for us. We heard from our customers and and we listened. And like I said, the people that would see these shows are driving in. From Spokane, they're driving in from wherever. They're going to come see this show, and then they're not going to come see, you know, our queer focus shows next week. That you know, they're, these are not people that that um, are going to regularly patronize the club. The people that are going to be perturbed by having these acts, and another another big aspect that we haven't addressed is that the the crowds for these shows are wild you know i mean and and the and as oh, evidenced by the the messages that that we've received you know the crowd the crowds are okay look i don't want to compare well, you saw the skank show in vegas i believe well, that's the skank show and, that, and actually that was well behaved too but that's that's the skank show i, I mean you, you can you can see but i'm saying if if that audience how would you assess that audience it was a dude bunch of dudes uh, it was well behaved, you know. There was no fighting or anything, you know. But that, but again, that's the Legion of Skanks thing, which I don't think is what Dave Smith's right. But I'm saying if that crowd wasn't too much, then one can assume that individually the crowds wouldn't be out of hand necessarily. But <laughs> uh, I don't want to compare Kurt Metzger to Rosa Parks, but the people who wouldn't let uh, people sit at the lunch counter. Use the water fountains, you know, things like this. Very often they said the same thing. I got customers to worry about. I have, you know, this but, is but yeah, but but you do have customers to I mean, you, you yourself have said that, you know, there 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 is a limit to you would break at some point. You you we're talking about Louis C.K. and you said that uh, you know, you you in principle you wanted him to work here, but at some point if you got enough flack and and business was suffered 
enough, then you would not use him. Yeah, I mean, but that didn't happen. Right. But the point is, is that business, deci- that business decisions are legitimate. We're, we're also, no, I'm not. I, that, well, maybe they were in the, maybe they were in the case of civil rights also. I mean, what he's saying, like maybe, maybe uh, it's okay to not want to let black people sit at the lunch counter because it's bad for business. It was legal. I'm, I'm, these are, these are weighty issues. I, like I said, I, like, I don't want to compare them to, to, to that outrage. It's not the same thing. Nevertheless, I, I am saying that there, there are principles here. I don't think your business would have, would have crumbled. No, no one's going to stop coming because Dave Smith worked there one night. I mean... We don't know. We don't know. I mean, he, the, the thing that I would say is, I'm not you. I don't have your experience. I've, I've never... We've never run a club before. We're not the comedy seller. Yeah. We're a small, new club, and we are scraping by by, by the skin of our teeth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and just trying to figure it out. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. Like, I, like, I have a question, though. No, no. Can, can I just say something? Yeah, yeah, sure. this is This is very fair point you're making. Like, <laughs> when, 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 you're, when you're counting pennies, as it were, yeah. it's easy for me to say, you know, take, take a chance. I've been in your situation and I don't, you know, I, I understand the anxiety you're describing. I don't mean to, to uh, not take it seriously. You guys don't understand the anxiety they're describing. I do. I understand anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Pat. I'm wondering, though, um, if it's a business decision and presumably you booked these guys because you thought they would sell out and it sounds like people were driving in from all over. Um, no. We, we... The only person who sold tickets was Dave. Yeah. And, um, so that is that whole they're selling out thing. I don't, I mean, the tickets were, the link was only up for two weeks anyway. No, so none think, of them think, were sold out. And I think, I think Dave Smith sold like 16 or 17 tickets in two um, weeks. But so. the reason that I booked them was because, like I said, I was a fan of Kurt when he was on Chelsea lately. I didn't know about the falling out of Chelsea lately and all of the history and all of that stuff. Like I watched him on that and that was it. And so, and then when I was on the phone, that's when we booked the other three guys. So if they had sold out, would you have kept them on? No. No, no. That's not what they're saying. No. Yeah, it's, it's it, like it might make us money that night, but it would cost us money in the long run. It would cost us, you know, reputationally. Um, and again, like... Unless you're building a club where people are driving in from other places. But that's, that, it, that's not been our business model, you know, and that's... I, I understand your predicament, and I understand you're t- 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 timid because of y- y- both your your newness to the industry and because of your your precarious nature of running a new business. Right. I do understand all, and that. not knowing what the hell we're doing. Right. Yeah. And we like and um, yeah, and well, even in this, like, try to just navigate that. We don't the like. Well, I, I, I have we, no idea. I should we, warn you: the last <laughs> new comedy club owner that came in here, I know him. Told him, uh, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but well, no, if somebody said that, I think Kurt said that it was going to be a Halloween spirit by next year. And we're like, oh, fingers crossed. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, like <laughs> if, if all goes right, then like for fuck's sake, like I feel like at this point I should have gone into politics. It would have been easier. Yeah. Like it would have been um, a less. You basically <laughs> did. Yeah. I, I just didn't. I didn't know. I had no idea. And you. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the thing is I didn't know. I don't know what I don't know. And I'm. I'm learning and maybe this whole thing was a huge mistake and maybe we will find out that we completely fucked up by un, you know unbooking coming here no <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> yeah, I mean I already thought of that <laughs> no um but uh, and and this will be another lesson just like what I learned with Kurt and this whole thing was that I need to Pay attention to what the fuck I'm doing. I, I don't like, I starstruck. Yeah, we well, got and, we got starstruck well, when we when excited. we did the book. I, listen, my my opinion is, yeah. you should run a comedy club, not uh not pursue an agenda. You're you're in a big I don't know the city. It's a pretty big city there, and if you can get national acts, you should book national acts. I'm trying to and yeah. right and and you know you have your your days where you can you can uh indulge your your social justice concerns and have your open mic for uh, um, oppressed or marginalized people whatever you're not going to make any money from that stuff there's no there's no you know they're, they're just you're just not going to make any money from that stuff and and the comedy's not going to be good not that not that nobody will be good but there's a reason that 
people become national acts. I, I respectfully disagree. You know, I think I, I do think there's a market for it. I think that um, the idea that there's one type of comedy, there's one type of way to run a comedy, I just, I reject that. I, I summarily reject that. There's not one type of comedy, but it all has to be funny. When, I, I know from many, many years of experience that if you are going to draw comics because of their attributes rather than because you hear them do f fantastic material, you're not going to have a great show. Again, you might have this funny joke, that funny joke, but people are not funny or not funny because they're gay, straight, black, whatever. They're funny or not because they're talented. Well, and that's not totally, how we're... I totally agree. And, yeah, and, yeah. and you're, not, you're just not, not going to say, let's just have only, let's only have, a ten, have 10 a gay show. comics in Seattle. Obviously, that's not going to be a, a great great show that's not how we book we don't we don't book based on attributes we book on people that let's well, so you're open, like you're, you have a night devoted to well it's called queers to the front that yeah. just means that they they have the opportunity to go up first it doesn't it, mean that only mic. queer people open can mic. be there it's for it's for everyone but why don't it's just a why, confusing you know, name uh, uh, i mean okay i mean i i i don't i more lament the audience that you're dealing with than your your reaction to it because i understand why you might have uh, blinked, but the the uh, hunger of that, the blood that that audience is after to make sure that nobody shall say or think anything that they don't approve of, and they'll ruin you, even if they know you're an ally. If you, if you, God forbid, would try to that, fe feed yourselves by putting on Kurt Mesker or Dave Smith, that disturbs me. Well, I just I think that's a mischaracterization. It's not about speech police. It's not about you can't say anything you want. What we're reacting to is statements made at the expense of other people. What statement? I mean, the the Legion of Skanks. Like, if you look at their website, it's you know they they praise themselves. This is the this is the podcast where you're going to hear the word faggot. You know, this is the podcast where you're going to hear the n word, and we don't care. Is that true, Max? You look that up. Um, Depends how they use it, right? I don't think so. Well, you I don't, just used I, it. I, I used it as an example. Because <laughs> you thought you, we were talking about fuck earlier. You used it in yeah. discussing it. You used, I mean, I, did, you call, did you call somebody? I mean, But that wasn't a joke, though. And it wasn't it. an attempt to make a joke. All this and more on the most offensive podcast on, on Earth. I mean, I, you know, I read somewhere that you know, there was a quote. You know, and it's it's something that they they actively market is that we are okay. outrageous, we are offensive. So let me show you something. Um, I posted this on Twitter. I, I can't believe I didn't think of it till just. Oh, but now. Noam, is there any place in your mind for comedy clubs promoting a certain brand? The Stand. I'm, I mean, they, they I guess they book a variety of acts, but they kind of fancy themselves as sort of outlaws in the comedy world, and 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 this club in Seattle. Uh, they 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 brand themselves in another way. I don't know if he's listening because he's on. The I'm phone. listening. Yes, but, but is there a, is that legitimate in your mind to say, well, we present this kind of comedy? Um, it's not for everybody, but that's our brand. You do what you want. Uh, it, it it just bothers me that the that you that the the audience is so um, intolerant. Anyway, um, so this was an ad from the. Uh, papers for uh, from the late 70s i guess or richard pryor movie now richard pryor you probably wouldn't allow on your stage um right i mean if you think about what he said and what he did and the kind of material he did talked about violence with women i mean it's a lot of, yeah I, like, the greatest I, comic of all time it, it, anyway but it wouldn't it, resonate yeah, with really our audience not. right so and and but it wouldn't even not only would it not resonate with your audience but again it's not about resonating with your audience your audience would not permit you to show it even to the audience that it did resonate with they feel that they have a a say not just in what they see but what you should be doing when they're not there yeah with their dollars with with what they spend with whether they come to the club that's that's but their this is say. one night with dave smith on the, they, they don't want him there be, not because they wanted to go that night it's because they don't want you showing these, uh, uh, presenting this stuff when they're not there. Because you have to stand for this. It's like you know the the personal is political, like communism. Like it, it's the way you live has to be pristine. The way you book, the way you speak, it's not just who you put on your stage. It's your whole way of life that they're going to judge. But, but but you you, you but isn't sorry. Do, do you not feel that like I've yeah. So so, so anyway, so Richard Pryor, the ad for Richard Pryor, just nothing has changed. 
Friday, number one, Richard Pryor, like you know him, harsh, vulgar, shocking, offensive. Richard Pryor live in concert. This was how things were marketed to liberal people. Mm. This was not my grandparents going to see Richard Pryor. These were young, liberal, tolerant, left-wing people. The way, they, the way you could reach them was say, vulgar, shocking, offensive, Richard Pryor in concert. Now, we've come full circle saying, Legion of Skanks is saying they're vulgar, shocking, and offensive. We can't book them. No. So you are lining up with, just, you got to just, that's what I want you to come through. You're lining up with the bad guys of the past. That's, that's really my, 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 my only point. But no, you call them yeah. bad guys. Do you think maybe uh, Jess and Dane are, are not, are, are misevaluating their audience and that their audience wouldn't mind at all? Do you think that they're... I do think you are, but that's, did, but that's not for me to say. Are, you have, you have to make, it's your business. You have to make that judgment. Did, did but, you like, guys, but I just, yeah. I mean, I said that earlier when I said this could all be a mistake. Yeah, I, think, I mean, I think I, it's a mirage, yeah. Now, I found that out the hard way. Right, but it, yeah. exactly. That's, yeah. but, and as a booker, like, and as somebody who, like, like there, there is a, an amount of pressure. There is, I, I, I can't imagine doing this without feeling the 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 pressure of the community and i do want to do the right thing um i i don't want to ruin comedians careers no you're not gonna or like no i mean and so but and 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 i don't want to i also don't want to censor people or keep them from you know being able to perform or you know but i i think that if this is worth anything um i'm not a booker but i have learned a few things just from listening mm -hmm. to gnome i think that the danger that you run and of course you could do whatever you want is that like where does it end mm -hmm. like at what point or at what word or at what podcast like where where do you draw the line mm -hmm. and that becomes something that be is very murky and it be and, and, well, and, and I know I asked him before, and it is interesting, and I'm, I'm, I know, I think this is true. Any of your comics could tweet out anything they want about Israel, mm -hmm. and they would not lose their spot at your club. Did you see what happened with Michael Rappaport at Helium in Portland? No. So they booked him, and there were. There was incredible dissatisfaction. There were protests. There were there was merch made. The the city stood up and and completely rejected him. They went forward with the booking, and I know a lot of comedians and producers that that won't work there now. You know, and and you know I think that there was reputational damage, and so it's I'm gonna say there's no comedian that won't work there now because they booked Michael Rappaport. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe it. People can say that, but I'm sure if somebody were offered a spot, right, of course. Well, comedians are going. I mean, we're going to go wherever I don't, they I don't, work, I don't, right? Absolutely. Like, and 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 if they and if they do feel it, it's outrageous. But what I'm saying is that you guys, because I know the politics of of that area, you may not want to let the anybody from Legion of Skanks on because they use the F word, but they can say what they want about the Jews. I mean, I I looked at some of the Twitter feeds of some of the people you book. They can say whatever they want. Right, you know, you don't care what they say about the Jews because your audience. You're, I mean, so, and and by the way, I don't care what somebody says about the Jews in my club. I, well, about Israel or about anything. I I, I feel like I really He's, feel like it's none of my business what people say. I, I mean, I may be crazy in the way I feel this way. I don't care what people think. But if somebody came into our club and was like, that was their whole thing was they were just shitting on somebody or something. No, not in the club. I'm talking that, about in their private lives. If you like, I say you, you have your issues that you care about, but it's not bigotry. Right. But like what it's they, just bigotry. What we were people. worried about was that they were going to bring that into our club. Like but why Kurt, wouldn't Kurt they? Mess, but because, why wouldn't well, they? Well you could see their stand up on 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 uh, YouTube. You see what right. they say. I, I mean I don't think Jim Florentine wouldn't say right Jim Florentine doesn't say anything uh, uh, I, I right, haven't seen I him in a that, while. I yeah I never he could, always struck me as a fairly Non-controversial like comment. Yeah, me too. That's I can I, show you. I, the I said generic. Got. I didn't mean generic. I meant. Uh, no. uh, I can play and show you. I can play your voicemail. Zeke Heil, Zeke Heil, you fucking Nazis. Fuck your comedy club. Free speech. Cancel people because their beliefs don't align with you. This is America. Free speech. You woke, goofy, liberal fucks. Fuck your comedy club. Free speech now and forever. You little blue-haired woke Biden voters.
Trump MAGA 2024. Fuck you. Oh, now you're cowards on top of scum. You have to record your calls because there's so many people that hate you, want to burn your shit to the ground. You're scum. You, your trannies, your faggots, all you fucking pieces of shit. Fucking die. We will take Seattle back. My great-grandparents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents, my family built motherfucking Seattle, bitches. My grandma had a ta tavern on Airport Way for 37 fucking years. You pieces of fucking shit. My family's lived here since motherfucking Seattle before it was even a fucking city. You pieces of scum shit fucking die. Emails okay, from your customers or from oh, that'd be no, great. no from, from, the, from their fans. Oh, from the, look, from their oh, yeah, fans. I, would like I, I mean, I will, I will go, I will say this: if you know your fans are capable of rape threats, it it, it is irresponsible to set them loose. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely, that that I will say, and 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 you know, you you should know who who your audience is, and and have and and. Have some ownership about what they do if you're encouraging it. I've had that problem too. I, 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 I um, know I've got death threats for putting Louie on. I don't know that you can take responsibility yeah, yeah, for no, they, poorly I, behaved. I, I, uh, well, they, I mean, they, that was I mean, horrible. he was literally encouraging. Was Kurt was horrible. encouraging. Okay, no, that, where, I, I mean, I heard, he said that I need to learn a lesson, like go for her head. And it would be one thing if it said comedy bar, but it said my name. Like they're, I'm getting, where, they're, they're coming for my. Where did Kurt say that? On uh, the Jimmy Door. Jimmy Door. I watched the Jimmy Door. And, I, I didn't hear him say. Yeah, that, but maybe I maybe I missed it. And and also on a, a local conservative yeah, radio show in Seattle, Nathan Rath. He 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 said, um, I don't think that you know I don't I don't dislike her personally, but I think that she should be ridiculed. I think that she should well, be made an example is, of. Is that I deserve a scarlet letter? Yeah. Instead of this, just being like I instead of it, like I just made a mistake. And and we tried to resolve it professionally. We contacted like, his I, management within two weeks of the that booking. I was supposed to do. We sent them a private message. It's not like we got on Twitter and said we're not booking these guys. No, none of this for, was for X of these reasons. We didn't think it was a public matter. We're learning. We went back to their manager with a private message that was respectful. At no point did we condemn them as people. At no pe time did we condemn them their comedy. We we told them based on conversations that we had with the people that matter to us, we needed to revisit the booking, and we wished them the best. You know, it, it, it this was not a smear campaign. There's a big difference between saying a book should be banned and I don't want a book in my home. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so it's uh, just it's it's been characterized as this is this issue like that of we hate them and that we're like culture. coming after them, and that is like. Well, it is related to cancel culture, but up until you said that last sentence, I, I have I have a lot of sympathy for you, what you're going through, what it feels like to be going through what you're going through, and the um, the fact that uh, the people on the other side, um, I mean, they're, they're comedians, and, and he feels you should be ridiculed, mm -hmm. uh, and I get that, because, you know, the, the, the point of view that, that you believe i've ridiculed right uh, asking for a particular person to be ridiculed he doesn't know his own strength right um i don't i know kurt he's a good person and i don't i don't doubt it. no no i'm saying i'm just gonna say that he, he wouldn't want you to be scared or, or any of these things he right. we're scared well, we, we got I, a bomb threat yesterday yeah, yeah he, he wouldn't want that and but people can be very um not realize that's awful. I'm sorry. That the, the ripple effect, the butterfly effect of, of the things Thank that you. they do, Thank especially when they have rabid audience. And I've, I've been on the receiving end of some of these things more than once. Um, so I, I, it would be lying of me to not uh, I am, acknowledge it. I am interested in the Jewish thing, though. Is that okay that anybody... No, I don't... Well, we, we, <laughs> the point is that there's, there's certain progressive <laughs> politics. I'll, I'll just say, and you can just... There's certain progressive politics. We know what it is. And right no, now... it's not okay. I mean, I'm not going to say that's okay. Right now in progressive politics, like I said on the show yesterday, because I got in trouble for putting these IDF people on, and I said I could put on any left-wing anti-Semite in the country, and nobody would really give me any grief at the club. But, but a right-wing anti-Semite, they say, you're a Nazi, blah, blah, blah. but a left-wing person, because for whatever reason, it's okay to say whatever you want about Jews on the left. And as a matter of fact, you know, it, listen, well, I, I don't know. we're going back and forth. 
you don't mean to be, you're nice people. You're obviously nice people. You're obviously well-intentioned people. You're in a, you're in an industry that, that is about free expression. Mm. You're in an industry that has a history of, of having landmark incidents regarding free expression that affect the culture. Mm -hmm. So you chose that industry. Right. Now you don't, you don't have mm -hmm. to live up to that calling, but it's not like you opened a deli and you found yourself in the middle of this political, this is, this is a traditional issue. George Carlin, lawsuits, uh, Lenny Bruce, law, uh, government, putting people in jail. So you're, you're in that industry and you're becoming a cousin Again, you're nice people. You don't want to be of the people smashing the windows. Was it at Berkeley this this week? You know, they yes. had some Jewish speaker there yesterday, and the kids there didn't like that this guy was going to speak sympathetically to Israel. So they start smashing the place up. This is more than adjacent. This is a close cousin of the sentiment that you're buckling to. And, and no matter how much, and I'm not saying it with insincerity, how much I, I do appreciate your position. And I don't even say in your position I would do differently. I, don't, I, I haven't been tested exactly like you're being tested. I have been tested, but I'm not, like in that particular way. And, because I, and I know that you're not bad people. Not that you came here from my opinion, but I can't sign off on it because it's wrong. In, in the end, it's wrong. It's leading the country down a terrible direction where everybody fueled by their certainty that their position is the right one, so right that no one else should even be platformed. And I will smash up Berkeley and I will riot outside the comedy cellar and I'll put the, the, this comedy bar out of business if they should have the nerve, not to endorse a view I don't like, that's not, but simply to allow that view to be heard. This is, this is heavy stuff. You waded into it because this is the business you've chosen, like they say in The Godfather. This is not something you never could see coming in the comedy business. This is the comedy business. And that's all I can say about it. But I, I, you are nice people, no question. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, it's really challenging to hear you put us in context with civil rights and gay marriage and be, we're a silly we're a silly little local club we do open mics four nights a week do you think that the cafe of go, go across the street was some big shot club when they got into the lenny bruce thing well i i know they, they had 80 people in that place these guys didn't even know that they were booked here no i get it i get it how it happened i get it i'm just yeah. saying you know you know we but now that it is a national issue you're standing you're standing for something and that's what you know you're you're standing yeah. for the enemy is a comedy. Maybe the friends of progressive politics as you define it, but not the people who stick, stick up for comics. I just, I reject the idea that there's, that there's this sort of binary way to do comedy, that there's real comedy and not real comedy. I, I just, I, I, saying that, I didn't say anything like that. Well, then how, how can we be the enemy of comedy for the enemy of comedy because you're allowing the audience to dictate again, not who they come see, they're allowing the audience to dictate that certain things shouldn't be said. Judy Gold who I'm sure you're familiar with, wrote mm -hmm. a book and had a one-woman show recently. And I, I'm assuming you know who Judy is, but mm -hmm. so, um, you know, she How was- How can you miss her? <laughs> yeah, I think that um, she was really on the front lines of the LGBT movement. It affected her career. I mean, you can hear her mm -hmm. talk about it a lot. She wrote a book and had a one-woman show. Out, she came out of the closet and she lost a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And the book is called, and the one-woman show is called, Yes, I Can Say That. So I do think that um, as people who deal in speech and language, my, myself included, this is an issue that um, even if you have a tiny little club somewhere, like it's ours. And so. What do you mean it's ours? It's, it's our issue. Like uh -huh. you, you, you have microphones and you are giving people the power or taking away the power or the ability to say things that you like or you don't like or, and like, well, I, I, no, can I just I ask? Mean, I, I, I feel, I feel really bad because the, the one, the one part of this that which really is not fair is that you wrote a private email yeah. and this is being weaponized yeah. against you. 
So, you know, you, you didn't. Well, and you we're going to lose this fight every single time. We don't know what we're doing. Like, these guys have 99.9 thousand more people in their corner than we do. Yes. Like, it's you guys have years of experience that we do not have. Well, they we say, they, say that, it, that we should know. We, we don't know. Uh, I, like, I, didn't, I didn't know until I actually did it. Like, with Dan's exactly. Report. And so, like, I, I don't know what I don't know. And I'm learning. And I'm, like, fucking up. And, that's, and I've said it. And I've said I'm so sorry that this happened. But I don't think that all of the things that you're saying is true yeah. about it. You don't have to agree with me. Um, it, to, yes. to your point about the private email, uh, I was I was pretty shocked. I was pretty shocked, number one, that Kurt didn't have the courtesy to remove her name and contact information from it. That felt targeting and and unprofessional. And the second thing is that, yeah, it was a private email. We We didn't attempt to embarrass them. We apologized. We wished them well. You know, I I don't understand what is so controversial about having values and and deciding what shows are right for your club and which shows aren't. You know, that doesn't make me the enemy of comedy. That makes me somebody that I want to go but see it, shows it, at. That makes me proud of myself. You know what? In a, in a, in a weird way, if you had presented it as I'm the only here and I'm personally offended by these people, I'm not booking them you'd kind of be on stronger ground than saying our customers and our community and our investors didn't like it because mm. there's, there's, a, there's a difference. Like, you know, if you, if, if you say this is my house and I only want things I'm comfortable with in my own business and you get your own business, then, then that's, that's it. That like, I thought that was like a given. Well, no, it was, I mean, I, it was, well, maybe I, I mean, I, if, I, if I yeah, like, I mean, if, but the, the, the appeal, the reason, the reason it sounds like cancel, it feels like cancel culture is mm -hmm. that there's a mob out there which is dictating right. to well, they, you as opposed to you being proud. Well, how, how much, yeah. how much, I know you're at, your investors might have mentioned, might have balked at some of these bookings. Did you get um, uh, uh, pushback from your regular customers about these bookings? Is there reason to believe that they would have re stopped coming to your club if you had booked these people? Absolutely, I would use the I would use the example of, of Michael Rappaport at 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 Helium again, and you know I know you say that no comics will go there, but I know that there are people that will not go back there because they booked him for his viewpoints on Israel, right? Um, and so it's although there might be some other group that will go, sure, for that reason, but uh, and and that's great. I what I don't want to do is we've got a business model that we're committed to. We've got a mission statement. We've come out and told the neighborhood this is what we stand for. From the very beginning. Yeah. From the very beginning, we've said that we stand for a place where anyone can come and feel safe to see a comedy show and not be, you know, not be called out for being a blue-haired freak, right? You know, which is a, a thing that's thrown around on, you know, about Seattle on the on the Jimmy Dore podcast pretty, you know, um, you know, it's it's that idea that 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 there are people who won't come see comedy because they're afraid they're going to walk in and somebody's going to be like, you're trans and make a bunch of, you know, jokes at the expense of their right to exist. And so for us, that was our mission is this is a place where anybody can come from any walk of life with any, any look, any way to approach their existence, any pronouns, any, any gender affiliations, any, anything can come in. And feel like they're not going to be singled out because they get that in their real life all the time. And comedy is supposed to be for everybody. But I think that there's a lot of people who live in Seattle who wouldn't come to your club because of that. And so how, how does that make comedy for everybody? How, how, how do you, uh, if there's a market for that and there's a place for that, and we're not telling people they can't do those jokes. What we're saying is we're trying to curate an experience based on our mission statement. I don't think comics are in the business of abusing audience oh, members. Oh, no. They, they do are from they? time to time. I mean, that, I, I, but that's not I don't know if they the abuse a, I mean, a, a, a trans person. I think they abuse a trans person last, <laughs> very, very last. I haven't heard anybody call out a trans person in our audience, well, I mean, ever, but sorry, that's 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 yeah. just an example, right? You yeah. know, but I mean, we no, no, I I was not disagreeing with you, but I, I, I mean, it's possible. It's possible, but um, at, at the very least, look, that's their brand. Yeah, they 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 have a right 
to that. And they, but but uh, but I I don't want to concede the point that these people are anti-trans or anti-gay or right. you know. It's, no, I don't. Well, but but but, that's but not what we're saying. it has to be. If these people violate your brand, they have to be violated, violative of the brand. No, it's not that. And if the brand is, is safe space for gay people, then these people must be bad for gay people. It's right? it's not the saying that they're anti-trans. It's saying what's off limits for them to do comedy wise. Like what? Like you know, it, it, you don't have to be anti-trans to go up and make trans jokes that you think are funny that make other people feel bad. So are right? Holocaust jokes okay? Oh, the Jews Stop. and the Holocaust. I mean, what? It's, it's a totally <laughs> legitimate question. If somebody got on stage and did nothing but Holocaust jokes, no, that would not be okay. Well, not nothing but Holocaust jokes, but like, Holocaust but that's, but that's jokes. What we're saying. Like, it's okay. Like, if you make it, like, I've told people, like, I have a very controversial comic who I have booked and he has a rape joke. And I'm like, listen, if you tell a rape joke, it better fucking be funny. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good attitude. Yeah, okay, yeah. exactly. I, I know. Like, and so. Well, I, I'm figuring it out. <laughs> of course, you don't know it's funny until you tell it. You got to test it, right? You know, and it but may this, not but, be funny. But this was for a a paid gig, like, and so I feel like it yeah. should have been. Yeah. Well, well who are the comics that would fit your brand well, and that you're you're having uh, that are headlining in, in the near future? Dave Chappelle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we just absolutely. had we just had Ian Carmel. I don't absolutely know. slayed. I don't know. Uh, K Katie Boyle, phenomenal. Oh, the Irish. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, sold out. Sold you know, out sold show. out a weekend. Um, Ollie Sultan was fantastic. He's great. He was he was there, and they all have their own viewpoints. Maximini. Yeah, Ma Maximini uh, came out. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Yeah. The Persian. We have comic. Eddie Eddie Pepitone. Oh well, Eddie. we Pepitone. know we yeah. Eddie. We know Eddie. Yeah. Um, you know, and and all of those comics have their own viewpoints, and they're they're completely free to express them. What what where I draw the line is when you start disrespecting or denigrating someone else's existence. But and did they? The the comics who've done the the comics I just listed. I think you're drawing the line, in, meaning that like uh, uh, Jim Florentine violate denigrates people's existence, and I'm just saying, I I, I it, it, it's not to my to my knowledge he wouldn't and hasn't. I'm not saying that he does that. I'm saying that that you know we're talking about the philosophy of the club. We're talking about you know what. What what you're characterizing as you know, um, um, you know, stifling someone's First Amendment rights, telling them they can't say something. What we're saying is you can't ridicule people from our stage. I'm not saying that's what Jim Florentine's right, going to do. Right, but I mean, but Jim Florentine's that, the guy you won't let play there. So you are saying that's what he's going to do, aren't you? The the podcast and the the group, and I know the the problem is is that. These guys all came to us from one manager. Yeah. They were all Perfect. booked at the same time. It's not like we could go and say, we, we don't want this guy. We don't want this guy. We want this guy. So who's the yeah. guy you really didn't want? Who's, who's, the, who's the one who had to go? <laughs> it's it was, not. It was Jim. Jim Florentine? Yeah, we're no, kidding. no, it's, it's not Jim. Is, is, you know, I mean, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, part of that is just the reality of canceling multiple acts with a, a management that they're, you know, we just assumed. So there's one act there. I, I don't want you to say who it is because I, obviously you don't want his, whoever their followers are. Just, you know, I, I, get, oh, yeah. I mean, it's going to happen. That, but obviously what you're implying is that it, 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 it was all or nothing. Mm -hmm. And within that bouquet of comedians, one of them was, was more than you could risk. Mm -hmm. Look, if somebody if somebody booked me and then canceled and said, "Look, no offense, and and, and it's nothing against you. We just don't feel you're right for our club." Uh, I would just be like, "Okay." I mean, I I might be upset if I had booked, if I had cleared that weekend out, and I be I might want compensation, something for my pain and suffering. Um, you know, had I had I had I lost work because I turned a gig down. One hundred percent. You know, that I would want. Listen, this, this but is... But I, I, my personal reaction would have been, okay, you right. know, I'll... I'll that, that's what we expect. Yeah. I mean, but this is not <laughs> that. This is this is an issue, I have to say, where there are... All the arguments have some merit. And I'm not... Many of the things you guys are saying to me are to be reckoned with. They're not... It's not nonsense what you're saying. But the implication of that what they're saying is a criticism. It's not just you're not right for the club. You know, we have a lot of Southern people here. They're not going to get your Northern humor. It's a moral knock. They're saying you're not morally acceptable for our club. 
And it's perfectly natural that people who are told you're not morally acceptable to be indignant. Say, fuck you. Who are you to say I'm not morally acceptable? Well, That's what's going on. Yeah. But there's other layers to it, which you've expressed. And and those layers are, um, could be, True, and you don't want and you don't want to take the risk to find out whether you know you're, you're erring on the side of caution, and you know also it, assume that nothing you put in writing is ever private. Like yeah, just assume it's that. going to be shared. That that is on the um, the lessons learned from this list. Yeah, that should be on the new code of conduct. Yeah, <laughs> not to don't. I I think you should. I think it, would you be able to create one night? Which is by design, you know, more less a less filtered night. You know, where you're saying we don't we don't endorse it, but this is you know, we're, we're like, can't your audience give you the freedom to make some money? Say, listen, we can book some uh, some national acts. We're not going to book anybody who we know is going to do a bunch of gay jokes, but it's possible somebody might say, you know, we're not we're not they're not going to submit. Like, these are all the things which comedians used to complain about. We're not going to force them to submit their act and we're going to go through like these on the Tonight Show in advance. And if, mm -hmm. and if they really are offensive, we won't book them again. But shit, we can sell out two shows at, at 40 bucks. Yeah. You know, for, for Jim Florentine, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not fair. They don't pay your rent. They have to be reasonable. Yeah. They have to be reasonable. But I, I understand. But at the, on the, the flip side... It does me no good if I take a stand in the name of free speech and I lose my entire customer base and I go out of business. So like how, like how does that? All I can tell you is that you wouldn't, but, but I can't, I can't. Don't take my, I remember that the Seinfeld episode of Babu, open a restaurant from your, from your native 100%, land. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> open a comedy club where people can say whatever they want. Trust me. It'll be, it'll be great. <laughs> yeah. There, there's a nuance to this neighborhood that I think is really hard to appreciate if you don't live there. Just like the Castro in San Francisco. You know, yeah. it's 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 hard to explain, and people from the outside don't get it. They just don't, and and it seems ridiculous. But oh look, you're the nicest villains of comedy I've ever met, <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate you coming on the show. We, we're about finished. I I mean it from the bottom of my heart when I say that you're, you're nice people. You don't have bad intentions. You are caught in a tough bind. You don't have my fanatical. Uh, a, a free speech agenda in mind. You're just trying to make a living and keep your head down and feed yourselves and your families. And you didn't sign up for this. Um, and I, I, I do, I do hope that the other side uh, appreciates all that and can detect in your tone and your manner that they should leave you alone. They should leave you alone. As, as, Thank you. As much as they might agree with what I'm saying, you don't deserve. You've gotten you've gotten more than you deserve already. Enough. They should leave you alone. That's what I think. Thank that would you. be my advice. Appreciate Thank you. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Um. Well, I don't have anything, but you know. Um, thank you for thank you for having us. Thank how, you. How long? Yeah. It's our pleasure. <laughs>